What's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how I designed and built this hand gimbal. And basically, it's getting warmer outside and I needed something that I could just walk around with, have smooth film, and it's working good so far. Uh, I, I put in a joystick on top of here where I can move the camera around so I can aim it where I want it to go. Also wanted something where I can have a stand for it so I could just put it down anywhere and not worry about uh, the camera going anywhere. Um, but yeah, so it's working really well. Uh, any tools that I used, anything, any parts I use, I will leave them in the description down below. All the STL files be located at Thingiverse. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started with the uh, build process and I'll sh start off by showing the Fusion 360 file. All right, here's the design on Fusion 360. Now, I did it into, uh, I broke it up into four different components. I have the base, the uh, top, and the top looks like. Um, yeah, go back to the base. The base looks like the cover, which is nothing special, and the the mount. All right, so this is how it looks like in Simplify 3D. The first five millimeters are a hundred percent. That way, I have a solid base all, all the way across here, so there's no bending or anything like that when uh, when there's weight put it on when there's when it's weighted, I should say. Um, and then this base too is is all 100 percent and then I go up to about uh, 30 percent for the rest of it um, I was able to tap these two holes and tap these two holes but yeah so this is how I printed it and this is on the CR 10 so I was able to fit it all on the, the every part on the bed alright so let's go ahead and get to the build so I have our joystick here this is the HW-504. I believe this is a PlayStation 2 joystick. Um, but what we have to do in order to get this to fit properly on our model is that these pins need to be straight pins and they need to come uh, from below. So it needs to kind of look like this. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and desolder it. Unfortunately, I don't have any solder wick. That would probably be the easiest method. But I do have a little like solder sucker. So you just prime it and you heat up the solder and you push it right here up against it and then you suck out the solder. I have the straight pins in and we're ready to continue on. So next we're going to grab our top piece and I made the first five milli millimeters 100% um, solid. So this is really solid. It's PETG so it's really strong. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my three millimeter tap that I have here and a, a 332 drill bit and we're going to tap some holes for this mount and I'm going to get it as straight as possible and the reason why I didn't put holes in here uh, prior is because I didn't have the Storm 32 yet and I didn't know how the plate was going to look but this is the plate and it's kind of hard to see because they're both black I kind of I didn't have uh, any lighter color than uh, black and PETG but um, I'm going to get this as straight as possible and then um, put in some screws. So once I have my hole drilled, I can take my tap and just as straight as possible. They do make guides for these. I don't have them, but I just try to keep it as straight as possible. 
until you get all the way through. It's good to do like one full turn, then a quarter turn back. That's what I normally do. All right, uh, it feels like I'm all the way through. So I can back out. All right, now we can I'll just grab one of these longer screws just to test it out. And it is turning in there beautifully. So, and it's really strong. I could pull on it pretty tight. It's gonna hold that gimbal plate pretty good. All right, let's get our rubber mounts and see how strong that is. All right, so here is the Storm 32. Yeah, I think it's around 70 bucks on eBay. And it also has two uh, IMUs in it. It has the 6050 right here. And then it has another built-in IMU on the actual board. So how this works is you before you even plug this in or before you even mount it, you need to calibrate the this IMU and then you need to calibrate this IMU. Um, I'll leave a link in the description of all the documentations for this. This video, I'm not really going to go over that unless I get a lot of comments saying that I need to. Um, I've worked with this gimbal before. It is a really nice gimbal. I really do like it. Um, it does come with a plate. It comes with a GoPro Pro 3 mount. However, I'm printing something for a GoPro 5 mount right now. Um, rubber mounts for the uh, gimbal or for the top cover. So rubber mounts go in between it to prevent vibrations. Comes with a couple extra screws and anything like that. Um, and the actual cable right here. All right, so I found some M3 screws that are about 10 millimeters long uh, thread-wise, and let's go ahead and mount these. All right, so one thing I failed to mention was to add these spacers right here. You don't want the rubber to actually touch on uh, the base of this right here. So make sure you just add the spacers it's going to make it a lot more smoother all right for this portion i'm going to be putting much larger screws in well not much but m4s instead of m3s through here and i'm going to use this loctite super glue as well so i'll put a little bit on top of here and then screw it in so this is what we have so far all right, so right now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, use a 332 drill bit and I'm gonna drill holes, all four holes in and tap out for M3. I'm gonna go ahead and this is the ribbon cable it came with, which has the perfect amount of strands that we're, need, we're gonna need. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire brown to ground red to power orange to the x axis and which will be our yaw and yellow to our y axis which will be our pitch and then I'm going to go ahead and feed the wire through I made a hole in here so everything can just fit through. All right. So I have my first little strand of wires through and now I'm going to go ahead and put all four screws in. All right. So our joysticks in place, nice and tight in. And we, so here we have our Y axis and our X axis. All right, so before I mount the Storm 32 on the actual platform, I'm going to go ahead and lob off this connector and add one of these type of JST connectors. I'm using these crimpers to do so right here. They work pretty well. 
And these are the pin side. I'm going to be putting on a female connector, which gets the pins, not the sockets. Um, and what I do is just each of these uh, are numbered. And I want to do 20 gauge because that's what it is. And then I look on the other side to make sure that I'm not crimping too deep. All right, so that's perfect right there. And basically I stick this wire with about this much contact on it. Stick this much, stick this wire in until I can see that contact and then crimp. I know you can't really see it on the camera, but I'll show you right here. So this is what it looks like. You got the insulation crimped right here and then the contact is crimped on the second part and then we just do the same for uh, the other side all right so pin so these are numbered and you're definitely not going to be able to see on the camera but pin one and or yeah pin one and pin two pin one gets the ground cable and oops put it in the correct direction Oh yeah, so sometimes you kind of have to pinch this just a tad to make it fit into the connector if the insulation's a little bigger than what is intended. So pin one, and it's I heard a click and it's in good, and pin two. Or click and it's good so there you have it that's how you put on a JST connector I'm using a 11.1 uh, a volt battery and it has an XT connector on there XT 60 and so this is my little adapter so I'll, I'll just plug it into here and this will get plugged into the actual battery all right we're good to now mount the Storm 32 gimbal on there. So how you mount it is first off you want to make sure your USB is going to be in the front and then you got to just kind of squeeze these rubber pieces in and just kind of turn them. So before we mount this we want to plug in our wires and I'm going to go ahead and plug in ground to ground and it's it says ground zero one two three volt but and so on and so forth so i'm plugging in ground and then i'm going to be plugging in the um 3.3 volts into it and then zero is going to be for roll which I'm not going to do roll, I'm going to do yaw and pitch. And so, um, so two, or two is pitch, so that's our yellow wire. Plug in that. And, or one is, one is pitch. Um, and then orange is our yaw, and that will go in two. So it should look just like this. Now that our Storm 32 is mounted, and I kind of did a little bit of wire management over up here, we can go ahead and start um, plugging it in and getting it calibrated and all that kind of stuff. So here I'm using a Hero 5, and I just 3D printed me a little mount that will go over the Hero 5's lens and will hold it in place. And I'm just going to reuse this. However, I'm going to have to take off this part. And probably just do that with this. Break it off. So that's about as balanced as we're going to get it. We can now go ahead and plug it in just to test it. Alright, so I have everything wired. And I have the button wired. I have the wires running through up here, uh, the power and everything else. The gimbal is mounted and the GoPro 5 is mounted, which I'm using that um, mount that I made as well. I already calibrated it and 
tested it out just a little bit and now I'm going to go ahead and finish putting it together. One thing I do want to mention, I did desolder uh, the pins that were on here and put the pins down here. However, I think I held the solder on there too long. This doesn't work now and I think it's because I held that solder iron on there too long. So what I did was took another one because it came in a five pack and I clipped the top pins on it and then I soldered the wires underneath it and then um, did a little hot glue and it's working good now. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Now we're just going to go ahead and wait for it to fully calibrate itself and configure itself. And... All right, that beeping means it's configured. Go ahead and stuff these wires in here and put it on the top. All right, so I made the top where it just snaps on, but I also left a hole in here to put in a screw in it, but I don't think it needs it. So you could tell that it works. Now to test out the button, the joystick, I look up, it looks up, look down, it looks down. I can also move it left and right. Now how I have it set up is if I go right it goes back into center. If I go left it goes back into center. Uh, if I go down it stays down. So pitch it's gonna stay no where I put it. And then it should hold position pretty well. And then also how I have it set up, or it has a, a drift in the yaw. So I turn it and it slowly comes to center. Turn it, slowly comes to center. And that's how I have it set up. And so it looks like it's working really well. Let's go ahead and take it outside and do a test out there. So that concludes this video on my 3D printed gimbal that I made. Um, so in this video I just went over how I designed this, the parts I used, how I put it all together, and how it works. And it turned out really well. It's, it's really strong. I could put a lot of weight on here and it's not going to go anywhere. It can hold up the camera. That, that's what I really like about it because I can actually use it to calibrate a gimbal for uh, my quadcopter or anything like that. I could just put it on here, calibrate the gimbal, and then um, get the quadcopter ready and then mount it on the quadcopter. All right, so if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of these type of videos, reviews on maybe uh, some reviews on printers, uh, reviews on other tools and electronics like that, uh, please hit that subscribe button. Stick around. Thank you all for your support and thank you for watching.